You be warned, she's seen the movie a lot. <laughs> I, I, how many times have I seen you at Q&As? This is my third Q&A with you. Third Q&A, but how many times have you seen the movie? She's seen oh. the movie 35 times. Today. I know her. <laughs> oh, okay. This is the last time we'll be meeting. You don't listen, do you? You just ask the same questions every week. How's your job? Are you having any negative thoughts? All I have are negative thoughts. What's the enemy of a film like Joker in the making of it? Some movies, you only have a 28-day schedule and you know you're just pushing the envelope. Was there something you felt could make this whole thing kind of go topsy-turvy and not, not happen the way you wanted? One of the things that I hadn't been used to doing when you tackle one of these movies is I've always made movies that, while you're making them, fly way under the radar. It's hard to make a movie mm -hmm. in New York mm -hmm. City mm -hmm. called Joker mm -hmm. with Joaquin mm -hmm. and fly under the radar. So that, I wasn't prepared for the level mm -hmm. of, you know, we're shooting a scene that day and that night it's on the internet. And, yeah. and when I say on the internet, yeah. meaning there's video footage yeah, and yeah. there's stills yeah. and, you know, I... So I, the I, spotlight on the you spotlight, making I guess, a movie... The spotlight, I guess, the simple answer would be the wow. spotlight okay. uh, was the enemy of the movie. Yeah. We got around it and those are kind of uptown problems. People want to see it. That's a good thing. But it was, it was definitely something I wasn't totally prepared for. <sighs> <clears throat> Can you please stop bothering my kid? Sorry. When we see the final product, it's so impactful to us. The process, is there anything you can do at the very beginning that says, here's what we're trying to get to, or here's what it should feel like? I mean, on this one in particular, I thought the script was so clear as to the movie that Todd wanted to make mm -hmm. that I didn't have a lot of questions. I kind of I very clearly understood it. But again, I also don't think you want to prejudice too much what the cut is. Mm -hmm. And we've worked together in a few films now, so I think at this point you kind of trust the cut that I'm going to put forward out, you know, to show you the first time around. During the cut, we would go back and, and look through scenes and say, where can we remove cuts? Whereas you'll see a lot of action films will have lots of cuts, you know, kind of per minute. This, we would say, okay, where, where can we let this, this shot play? Where can we let Joaquin's performance play? out longer in this shot and maybe take one shot here, one shot there, out. When I was a little boy and told people I was going to be a comedian, everyone laughed at me. Well, no one's laughing now. You can say that again, pal. With the physicality of this lead and the weight loss, did that open up from the very beginning some path for you in terms of uh, costume? Yeah, I think so. I'm, I know Joaquin's physique pretty well because we've worked together twice before and he lost a lot of weight for the master as well. So that on his back and he also knows how to show it and make it more pronounced. You're always working with uh, his choreography moves. He worked really hard to uh, do some kind of Chaplin-esque moves mm -hmm. and you know that might have influenced some of the proportions on his Happy the Clown outfit you know I'm always working with my actors on every aspect of it he Can lost I a lot of weight so we're gonna play that up <laughs> one of the things we talked a lot about was this sort of Jungian idea that we all walk around with masks on and Arthur is actually his mask and as he chips away at the mask throughout the movie revealing his true identity his sort of shadow persona which is Joker the person he was meant to be so the bathroom dance is one of the first sort of chipping away at the mask where we feel Joker emerging one small thing yeah when you bring me out can you introduce me as Joker we set out to make a film that illustrates the sort of lack of empathy in the world. And the idea is that when we treat each other with this kind of discourse and this kind of dismissiveness, you get the villain you deserve. Couple that with mental illness, childhood trauma, a lack of love, and these are kind of the recipe for someone like Arthur in this movie. It's not a, a warning, it's just, you know, the goal was to make a villain origin story and look at where could Joker come from if we run it through a very realistic lens. I've spoken to many 21-year-olds that think it's a great villain origin story for Joker, and I've spoken to other people that realize 
the movie's really about the power of kindness, and that's something that we wanted you to feel. But it's a hard question to answer because you kind of want people to have their own experience with the movie.